Not as I pictured was an accident. I mean, I've never been sick my whole adult life except for basic colds and things like that. And I went in for a routine CAT scan for something else, and uh, man, what a shocker. So I started taking pictures just as a sort of a reflection, reflective uh, reaction as a way to cope with my fear. In my case, I was emotionally unprepared for it. But very early on, I started you know, doing a rough edit of my work. And I thought, you know, if I can go into remission, and of course I hoped and prayed that I would, that the work that I was gathering could truly help other families uh, dealing with life-threatening illness, especially cancer as well. And that's exactly what's happened. So I try to confront the cliche head on and um, let people know some things that, that perceptions of cancer are changing. I mean, I, even as a, someone who became a cancer patient, up to that point, I still believe that when I saw a, a person walking around who I knew had cancer, who had no hair, who was you know, completely bald, that you know, they were on their way to their grave. That's not, just not true. My film has a very unusual business model because we're giving away 10,000 copies free. Anybody affected by cancer can go to notasipicture.org and order a free copy for personal use. And we're hoping that people uh, are moved by the film and they'll encourage their libraries and institutions to then buy copies, which helps us keep our humanitarian goals alive. I believe no matter who we are, no matter what neighborhood we're from, no matter what culture we're born into, what our religious background is, even what our political beliefs are, you know, we share common bonds as people. We all want to be loved, we all want to be respected, and we all want to find meaning in our lives. So I think that you know, my work can help build cultural bridges between seemingly disparate peoples. Doing a project in 21-year-olds was kind of an accident. I happened to have done a project on a 21-year-old murder suspect, and it kind of made my career. It won a Robert F. Kennedy Award, helped me become the National POI Photographer of the Year, uh, earned me some money and a lot of attention. And I thought about you know, this poor guy sitting in prison. I wasn't trying to defend him, but he, he was a murder suspect who was robbed and choked and beaten and he, in turn, killed the person that was provoking him in this way. So the question was, did he have the couple seconds it took to premeditate a first-degree killing? Even if you're provoked, it can still be first-degree murder. Or was it self-defense? And his name was Rodney Woodson, never before been in trouble, from the worst slum in Pittsburgh, the Hill District. And um, so he was given five years for voluntary manslaughter. I thought about myself, because here I am, a, you know, a white guy from the suburbs of Wilmington, Delaware, and I was a really rebellious teenager. My, my students now at the University of Florida can never believe that, but it's true. And my mom actually helped me get my start in photojournalism by bringing me to the hometown newspaper to keep me out of trouble on Saturday mornings when I was 14 years old. And um, in any case, so I thought about Rodney, I thought about me, and I thought, where would I be if I'd been born in the Hill District and he'd been born into suburbia? So that, pr that uh, project got me thinking about 21-year-olds as a microcosm into American society. So I followed some of the people that might be cultural icons, including a rock star who happens to be in my film some years later, NFL rookie, New York model, Harvard student, you know, and some of the people left behind by society, prostitute, unemployed guy in Appalachia and West Virginia with the highest unemployment in the country.